Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Dids. Welcome to the long-awaited tutorial on how to make this particle ball. I asked for 10 likes and I have received 10 likes. So I'm going to show you guys how to make this particle ball and I might make it a little bit different, maybe make it blue or something and just add some stuff. We'll see how it goes. There's so much that you can do with this particle ball and that's the good part about it. You can do whatever you want to make it catered to your needs. So, we'll start off by making a new composition. Tutorial. That's as simple as it needs to be. Uh, we're going to make a new solid. Command or Control Y. Need to make this white. And I'm also going to make it a 720 by 720 square. And we are going to apply the ellipse tool. Double click so you get this mask. And then you go to, actually you don't need the mask. Ha! First mistake. Go to Fractal Noise. Bring it on. You get these clouds. That's that's cool. Uh, looks good. You can boost the contrast if you really feel the desire to. We'll leave it like that. You can also play around with these. Like I think I did Smeary and and Linear. Or, you know, you can do whatever. I actually kind of liked it how it was a little bit more. Uh, you can do whatever. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna Alt click on this stopwatch by evolution. And you're going to type in time asterisk, which is times 500. Now, you can do anything essentially. This just animates it and it determines how fast it is animated, as you can see here. So, what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to just clip this composition to 10 seconds, and that's not what I wanted. Um, extract work area. There we go. Okay, I think I got it. Alright, so then we can zoom out. Da, da, da. Okay, so as you can see, it evolutes, evolves, evolutes really isn't a word, and it moves and it looks all nice. Your next step is going to be to add fractal radial. No, radial blur, if I can spell correctly today, and throw that on there, and you get this cool little spirally effect. We'll make it 150. And if I'm not mistaken, make it zoom. So you get this, and make sure that this is high. Uh, which makes me come to believe that you do actually need the mask. So then you can go to the mask, and I don't like how it intercepts here, and you can see that it's part of a square layer. So you can turn the mask expansion down until you're happy with the results. So what you see here is this cool little rain halo effect with this what is now going to be considered the ball and a nice little aura around it. So you can feather it too a little bit if you want. You can play around with that. It's up to your discretion. You can do really whatever you want. But I'm just going to leave it like that. So now I'm going to make a new solid. And I'm going to use my favorite editing color, 00EAFF. And that's going to be essentially just my overlay. I'm just going to set this to add, put a little bit of a circular mask on it, turn the opacity down to about 20 percent, and then I'm going to take that mask and despand it and feather it. So it gives kind of a bluish hue to it. Uh, we can play around with the rest of it in a little while. I'm going to duplicate that and scale it down so that it's kind of like the actual ball itself. So that looks pretty darn impressive to begin with. As you can see, it animates and it looks really incredible right now, just like it is. And we still have a lot to do yet, my friends. So next step, let's make another solid. Doesn't matter what color it is, because we're going to apply Particle World. All of the things that you see me using right now are all built in After Effects uh, plugins or effects. Uh, so what you can do, take out the radius, the position, the motion path, the grid, the horizon, and the axis box. That's all. Well, none of it's important. So you go to the, actually what you, the first step to this is, as you'll see, it takes a little while for the particles to be birthed. So go to about one second, move it over, and then just expand it, and that solves your problem. 
So birth rate I'm going to keep for right now. Physics is what we want to start with. We want to turn the gravity to zero. We want it to just explode out and it'll look really nice like that. You can turn down the longevity to essentially do the whole mask with the feather effect that you see in other portions. Uh, you can play around with the explosion. Sometimes fire looks pretty cool, but it seems always to be a little bit off-centered, so you really have to kind of play around with that, and you can do viscous. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but I'm going to call it viscous. And there's a whole bunch of different options that you can do with that. But I'm just going to leave it kind of like it is. I'm going to do the line here. I'm going to keep it as line. The birth color I'm going to do as a very intense cyan white. And then the death color I'm going to do as a very harsher, darker blue. Something similar to that. And as you can see, there's a bit of a gradation here. Set it to add. And maybe set the transform on here to add rather than the layer. Well, I guess it really doesn't matter. Set them both to add, or you know, you can do lighten if you really don't want it to be that intense. You could probably do screen, I'm sure it looks good too. That, that actually looks pretty decent. I'm going to keep it as that. And as you can see, there's these particles that go pew pew and look really cool. So, you can also play with the producer and kind of move the Z radius up a little bit. Scale down the layer maybe to 90% just so it doesn't get too out of hand. And as you can see, there's definitely some cool movement happening right now. So what I like to do then next is duplicate that layer. And essentially all you're changing is the line to a, is it shaded sphere or faded sphere? I want to say it's faded sphere. Yes, to a faded sphere. The size variation, 100%. Max opacity, 100%. Birth size, um, do 0.5. And then death size, about 0 to maybe 0.05. And you can turn on the opacity on this lines, because the lines kind of is a bit of a sharp contrast to the somewhat fuzzy feel that you get from the outside aura here and this is kind of like a harsh part of it but you can you know do whatever you want with it I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit to probably actually let's do 40 that looks pretty good then you have these particles that are coming out of it and that actually looks pretty phenomenal in, in itself and already I'm going to scale this up though back to 100 these particles here and I'm going to increase the birth rate a little bit to 3 so that looks pretty good get a couple particles verging out uh, this film grain effect here I don't like how that looks uh, maybe it was not just spin all of that, actually I'm going to use that in a second. Um, so let's actually just go ahead and use that. Let's do this. Duplicate it. Turn it to spin. And you see it kind of makes the ball more noticeable. Let's see if point to add. Ooh, I actually really like how that looks. Turn it down to 50% opacity, and it looks even more so like an orb now. And it still evolves with the rest of the stuff, as you can see here. And that just looks ridiculously awesome. So, once this loads, I'm going to just turn it down to half for now. I still do not like how that's turning out, so going to turn the opacity down a little bit on that then I'm going to duplicate it turn the opacity back up to 100 but then just reduce the blur to maybe 50 and maybe maybe we should reduce the opacity uh, scale it up perhaps or uh, there is a mask on it we can just reduce the expansion of that mask there and as you can see that's starting to really come together and look 
unbelievably incredible. It's a very nice particle orb. You can even just remove this layer completely and you get essentially just the orb itself that you can use. But if you want more of like an aura effect, I kind of like how this is turning out. Um, maybe if this was set to add as well. That, I kind of like that actually. We'll just keep it in for now. Next step is to create a new solid. We're going to apply this mask to it. And we're going to go to ramp. We're going to generate a ramp upon this. We're going to go to radial ramp. We're going to take this and make it 360, essentially half of whatever your height is. In this case, it's 720. And you can play around with the end of ramp Y value to make it more or less what you see in front of you there. So we'll go back here, do my OOEAFF, except EAFF, and that'll be the start color. The end color can be just more white. Then you can play around with these here to get the desired effect. Am I still recording? Okay, good. And what you can do here, so you can obviously mask it, feather the crap out of it, reduce the expansion until you get what you like. I'm going to decrease this here a little bit more, and then set it to add. And then it's kind of like a color overlay, so we can probably turn this back to normal, because that's just way too much. And then you can turn down the opacity to maybe 20%. And as you can see, by me turning it off, it adds a little bit of color, a little bit of glow, a little bit of depth. So I'm pretty happy with how this looks right now. The lines kind of make the particle ball look, in essence, veiny, if you know what I mean. And it makes the somewhat sunburst effect of the outer layer to work. The balls inside make it look like a sun and just it makes it look really three-dimensional and just the whole evolution process really makes it come together really nicely so you can slowly see here it came together pretty nicely for a blue ball usually in most cases like in my example here there was just an orange ball because orange gives you the impression of like a hot particle ball or that there's some temperature and some tension there but I chose to just make a blue ball because blue is my favorite color and I'm pretty biased towards it and that I forgot. I forgot a lens flare. So last and final thing we're going to do here is we're going to generate a new layer, put on some lens flare, uh, ramps lens flare, lens flare, there it is. And we're going to, it should be, if we set this to add. That's not what I need to do. I think it needs to be a white solid. Maybe not. Where's that lens flare? Flare brightness center. Huh. The layer was set to add. Interesting. Let's just make it white. Put that on. Drop the lens flare on, set it to that, it was about 70%. I'm really confused as to why that is. Oh well though. What about screen? This is very interesting. Maybe if I just put it on another layer. Like the ramp layer. Add no opacity. Sorry for this. The opacity on that one was low anyway. So you wouldn't have been able to see it. Okay, well, you can kind of see a little bit of brightness change throughout the particles. So you can kind of add a little bit of direction with the lens flare option. And you can play around with it to see what you like. I don't know why that's not working, but that's not for me to determine. So, also, you can
can add some looks. Some magic bullet looks. This is not a prepaid, or this is not something that comes with After Effects, but I figure I might as well just show you. You can do the same thing with curves in other programs, but I just like to put a little bit of pop, just about 25%, we'll do 23, and then just this film like preset. Unfortunately, with the case of it being blue, it doesn't add too much. But what you can do instead is you can go to Levels. And you can kind of play around with the levels and make it look a little bit more colorized. You know, that could be a good negative or... You know, you can play with that. Just a blue moon. That almost looks like the moon. You can play around with that as well. So let's bring it down to about here. Need a little bit more. And then you can play around with the individual colors to make it more colorful towards one, one color or another. So I hope that you guys learned something with this tutorial. I'm going to post the After Effects project with both of these particle balls as well as um, just the video of the ball itself in a media fire link when this video hits 15 likes. So please feel free to like this video if you learned something or if you want to use this particle ball in your edits and your videos. Uh, obviously, just give me proper credit, and it's all yours. But uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this. If you can share this with your friends, I feel a lot of people can use this, and I'm going to use it myself once I actually get into some real-world editing rather than just Call of Duty edits because you really can't incorporate this into Call of Duty because... A shot being fired goes so fast that you really wouldn't even see it, and it just wouldn't work out well. Believe me, I've tried. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Please give this video a like, comment what you think, share it with your friends, and otherwise, have a wonderful day.